Hello everyone and welcome back. So now that Lee has got value noise both 2D and 3D optimized, we're going to shift gears and move over into Perlin noise. And just for the sake of easy viewing, I believe we're going to break this up into two videos. So we'll do Perlin noise 2D and then Perlin noise 3D in the next video. Again, you guys could just quickly, you know, jump through this because it's just going to be a lot of repetitive stuff. Right. I'm just going to, in the first part, explain what we're doing. I've already explained how to implement the the LERP. So I'm just going to type it in again, but I'm not going to explain it just so we've got notes on it. So it's just based. And um, then I'm going to explain what's going on with the dot product and how we're going to unroll that. And then um, we'll just start going through it. And after you know what's going on, you can stop the videos and just keep on going. That way you don't have to get to the end and watch me try to figure out how to figure out percentages. <laughs> but I did valid validate the equation and it was right. So, <laughs> But I just had to check. Epic. All right. Now, I, yeah, legendary. <laughs> All right. Now, a dot product. What is a dot product? A dot product is a a scalar a scalar value that you get back out when you multiply the elements of each component or each element of a vector now what do i mean by that in this case we're going to be dealing with 2d vectors so each vector has an x component and a y component so you're used to seeing that written or in Unity as something like a vector 2D or a vector 2 that has an X and it has a Y. So you're already used to seeing this all over the place. Now what we're going to do is to get a dot product out. Let me comment this so we don't get the error. So to get a dot product of two 2D vectors, we're going to take the x of the first uh, vector and we're going to multiply that by the x component of the second vector and we're going to add that to the product of the uh, y component of the first vector and the y component of the second vector and that is your dot product. So we're going to do that with these dot products. So if we look at the very first one, comment that out, give us some room to work with. Our first vector is this grad3 dot or with an element of GLL. So we're going to copy this so I don't have to type it again. And we're going to take its X element or X component, depending on which way you prefer saying it. And we're going to multiply that by our X component of our second vector. Well, here we're creating a vector. We don't need to create it. We've already got access to the X value itself. So we're going to multiply by X. To that, we're going to add the uh, product of, again, the uh, grad3 GLL dot Y times Y. And that will give us the same result as if we called the dot product. And we're going to do the same thing for the rest of these. So go ahead and comment out these. Paste them in. Now there's a little bit that we have to adjust because over here we're subtracting um, one from a even, couple of the even elements. Even before you do that, I'd and worry I've got to do yeah. these ones too. Yep. What's that? Yeah. that? Yeah, I'd grab those first. So for each one, just copying and pasting. Control C, Control V is your friend. All right, so we've got all those in. Now here, we're subtracting one from Y. 
Now we want to make sure that we do that before the multiplication. So we're going to have to put this inside of what are these brackets? Parentheses. 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 I always get those wrong. So we have to do y for that one and y for this one. This is just going to make sure that our order of precedence is correct. Otherwise, we'll get some funky results. And we need to subtract 1 from x on this one. And to manage to get caps lock turned on. All right, so that will take care of our dot products. Hang on a second. Did I miss one? Yeah, look at the very last line. What are you doing with your x and the new vector 2? Oh, this one needs to be mm -hmm. yeah, the same. There. Okay. I would have picked up when we ran it. Yeah, all right, I'll be quiet then. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay, because I'll hear about it then too. And then I'll just go, why didn't you tell me? You told me to shut up. Exactly. Now, a lot more of the same. same thing. Yeah. And now for something completely the same. Last one is NYL. D. Now, yeah, good catch. You know, we could have done something like this as a knowledge review because I saw a thread that. Uh, somebody was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if the MMO had knowledge reviews and stuff? We could, we could come up with like a system instead of doing this. We go, okay, now we showed you how to implement value noise and Perlin noise. The knowledge review is for you guys that go ahead and implement simplex noise. <laughs> that would have been fun. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump over, make sure we're using... Uh, that didn't work. Jump back over to Game Manager and make sure that we're using our 2D version of Perlin because I want to test Perlin and make sure our dot products and our lerping inlining all works correctly. So, jump over to Perlin. We're down to 26 seconds. 26 seconds? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Divided by a thousand. Oh, okay. I'll let you finish your sentence next time. Exactly. Thank <laughs> you. All right. So we're down to 26. We started at 55. But we're all over how to calculate the percentage. So now that we know that, we can take... 26 divided by 55 and subtract it from 1. So we get 52.7%. It's a pretty big improvement there. Yeah, I'd say so, you know, over twice as fast. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely something that's worthwhile, which is why everybody should be making these performance enhance, um, enhancements or adjustments, especially if you're ever planning on using the Perlin algorithm. For sure. All right, well, that'll wrap up the, uh, the Perlin the 2D. 2D. Yeah, in the next yep. video, we'll take care of the 3D. So thanks right. a lot.